What's up, y'all? What's good? Y'all. <laughs> What's happening? So mm-hmm. apparently the Eagles are going to the Super Bowl, Super baby. Bowl. I and couldn't even. Are like, I couldn't even. I couldn't even. I just started thinking about Eagles going to the Super Bowl as soon as it, I got the Jonah. I was like, "Damn, yeah, we going to the Super Bowl, baby!" Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know we're live, right? We are yeah. live. That's how. That's how we can prove it. Um, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Ten Seven Show with Tyra, Tara, Goose, and myself. We are so, all yeah. back together again, and uh, we're back to bring you such a lively advice driven show um <laughs> i can't wait to get into these dear 10 7 letters because um they're juicy mm-hmm. and uh and of course we have some things to uh to bring across to you but like i like to start every show i like to start off by asking how y'all been so hey goose tara tara how you been um we've been good well yeah. we we lived with COVID all week um that bitch entered our house um Ooh. but we're good now yeah, I'm all right. glad to hear that. I'm good. He's all right. We've How, we've shipped her out of the house. She's gone. What was it like? Like what was? Um, it? he was a shit show. I think I sneezed. Yeah, she was like, <laughs> like maybe twice, and, <laughs> and, that's it. and then like, and then like, like two days later, I tested negative. So I was like, oh, that was easy. But he was, oh, this one. That's why he wasn't with us last week. He was my poor husband. He just can't catch a break. But he's good now. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Good. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear y'all feeling better. Glad to see y'all back on the show with us. And uh, how you been? <sighs> this allergy season is approaching. I'll say mm-hmm. that. So, uh, but other than that, allergy. <laughs> look, huh? like you show us allergies. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, just like I just got one eye that just likes to water, like just one uh, eye. Yeah, so, you know it comes and goes. It does what it pleases. But other than that, you know, back to work, chilling. Mm-hmm. What can I say? Life is good. How about yes. you? I'm good, man. Can't complain because the Eagles going back to the Super Bowl. Hey, baby. It's so exciting, and I'm not even a sports fan. Blew them Niners out. Yo. Yeah, I didn't. So, I thought they was. I can't, mean, I can't believe they wanted to fight. Really? Y'all know what y'all like? Yeah, I know. They was mad, man, right? Yo, yeah. there's five. There's five teams that I just like don't like. Like you know, first of course, number one, Cowboys. <laughs> um, Giants are another one. Um, now I'm I'm blanking on them. The, well, anyway, the Niners are part of that five. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, to see that, I mean, I'm so glad the Eagles won that game, man. It's just, yeah, I'm glad it was a blowout. Yeah, I'm, I'm it glad it was. was. It was crazy. Glad it was a blowout. Yeah, I, I was, I was legit scared to watch it because I said, listen, I don't need my pressure to be up. You know, <laughs> I, I wasn't in for the back and forth. I was like, I'm gonna just watch a little bit. But then it was so good, and then the score got so high. Like, I was gonna ride it out. He, he definitely did. Did you hear what he said? What he say? I just spent all that energy on that. I spent all my energy on that game. Mm-hmm. He was all mm-hmm. rooting and cheering and everything, hollering and screaming, and then he was like, <laughs> "That's that why I got nice. the team." Now. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That's how my daughter was. She was in here screaming. Oh, she liked my mom. Oh, uh, okay. She in here screaming, hollering, growling. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's she funny. Had a good time, though, so. but now, oh, now, now folks is all out on Burr Street. My daughter like that. They're mm-hmm. great fans. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're great fans. Um, we have a great show. We have a great topic. You know, real. I, I was reading through the topic. I like. We got a real great topic for you today. Coming up a little later in the show, um, but I'll give you a quick peek. Little things women do that guys secretly love. We got a whole list here, y'all. So mm. Take some notes. Get, get yourself ready. Take some notes. You want to make your man happy today? All right. I'm excited about this. Want to make your man happy today? But first and foremost, we're going to start the show with y'all favorite part of the show. As soon as I find the graphic here, I'm sorry. Is this it right here? That's not it. Here you go. <laughs> it's the Would You Rather portion of the show brought to you by Therapeutic Billing. Tara, tell us about Therapeutic Billing, please. Absolutely. Therapeutic Billing is a medical billing credentialing recredentialing firm that also offers virtual assistance services and bookkeeping services. 
Um, we cover all of the United States, but we are located, located here in Montgomery County. Um, the telephone number for therapeutic billing is 610-228-2029. And the web address is therapeuticbilling.com. There you have it. Y'all got to get it done. Get that virtual assistance. Y'all know some of y'all need it. <laughs> do. all right so here we go i got our questions today we're going to do it a little bit different um instead of doing a would you rather this is uh if you were or if you statements and then we're going to go ahead and discuss them so uh if you don't mind and you want to respond to the questions go ahead and put your questions in the chat so here is the first question if you had to live with it always being nighttime or daytime which would you choose and why Daytime. Because I need vitamin D. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, I would probably go with daytime too, because you see better. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, I would say daytime because even though people do stupid stuff all the time, people do some real stupid stuff at that night. That the, and that was my reasoning. Like I was gonna say a lot of I was going to say daytime, but I was going to say because a lot of nefarious things tend to occur nefarious. under the cover of darkness. Darknesses. Words like nefarious. You know what? You and me, yes. I'll cry. Oh, well, well. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. So then that's good. Are we all on the same page? So here's another question, and I thought um, this would be good. Um, if you could be another person for a day, who would you choose to be? Jesus Christ. Oh, it depends on what day you're gonna pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> that's true. Now that's true. Uh, Definitely, uh, uh, <laughs> Definitely not Jesus on Calvary because that no, that's not. No, that's that's that was a bad day. No, he got his right, right? all the way to Calvary, so you can pick any of them days either. Anyway, um, hmm. I wouldn't pick. Who would I I'd just be? be doing, I'd be for performing miracles just for the fun of it. Okay, and just Jesus for the day. Like, watch this. Hmm. Everybody got wine. No, like, I, watch, watch watch the water just go straight up. I would say I would want to be Oprah for a day just to see what it's like to live her life. True, true. That was one of my picks. That was one of my picks. Now I got the switch. <laughs> I would definitely be a rich person so I can get the interest that they accrue. That during, day. during that day? Mm -hmm. That day. You know what? I would be Warren Buffett. Mm. That's who I would be. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's good. That's good. That's good. Well, who, wait, did Justin and Goose answer? Yeah, I yeah, said, he I said, said Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. oh, yeah. So, but I'll pick. I don't, I don't, I don't like Jeff Bezos. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, neither one of them. Barack Obama, be Barack. I don't think Barack get enough interest on the money he got in the bank. Mm. I'm talking about a billionaire, so I can give me like at least ten. You really see what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Richard Branson. Branson. You could be Richard Branson. Yeah. She we call it Richard Branson. Day, she will, uh, it would be daytime all the time for her. Okay. And she liked, she liked your answer, Tara. And then, mm -hmm. and then Leslie said, day, I'm a morning person, and the sun makes me happy. Totally. Nice. <laughs> OK. All right, so here's the last one. If you could do any job, what would you like to do? Hmm. I want to be the male version of Vanna White. Is there a such thing? Yeah. Uh -huh. All she do is bang. Right? She don't even got to turn the thing no more. Yeah, so I just got to be in touch. I can walk and touch, what, for a half hour? Yeah, a day? every day. Yeah. I'll do yeah. that. I'd be a host of a late night TV show. Oh, that seems like fun. Jimmy Kimmel, Arsenio Hall. Arsenio Hall, yeah. That seems fun. Mm -hmm. I would have a definitely. Uh -huh. If I could do any job, I, I would I would like to try being I would like to be like a famous actress, like like Mia Long or Viola Davis. Okay. Really? Yeah, I would I would want to act. 
I think I would want to be one of those people that work at NASA that make the spaceships go up. Like you, like you want to be Houston? Houston, you have a problem. You like to be an engineer. Houston, they, they all. You want to be the person that pushes the button that makes it go? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that be good. Like yo, what you do at work? I I'm said, too old. I want to. It's bang. only for one day. Bang. I like, right, that's, that's a dope story to tell somebody. Like yo, what what do you do at work? I hit the button to make your rockets go up. I would like turn lettuce. <laughs> 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 Does she even still turn the letters? Like she just hit them now and they appear now. Yeah, right? exactly. yeah like they light up. Yeah, the like, like, it's it's somebody in the back hitting the button, probably. Yeah, yeah, man. So, hmm, will she be replaced by AI soon? Maybe. I mean, she is like ninety nine, so it's quite possible. I put it to you like this: when she retires, AI will replace her. Yeah, right. I don't think they because can AI could have already put her bed in. And that's when Will of Fortune will go off the air. <laughs> exactly. Her and Pat Sajak is about that time, man. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Don't he say that. He already has a deal with Alex Trebek. No, I don't mean like that. No, like oh, he's like tired. Tired. Not tired. Not tired. Not tired. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Made me nervous. Stephanie <laughs> said anybody could be president. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it for 1000 Mm-hmm. Listen, you don't even you don't even have to read on a third grade reading level to be president anymore. All you have to do is be born in this country and be old enough. Yep, be have born enough in this money. Country, be old enough, insult a bunch of people. Yep. You can be president. And then you can lie about everything and still be okay. a politician and keep your job. Like Mm-hmm. And once everybody knows that you're a liar and you've lied about everything. Hey, all right, all right, all right. I feel oh. like we're about to go into Sorry. a whole different right. topic. Right. Sorry. Right. All right, on to the next. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that was that was our um, if you were mm-hmm. questions for the day. So, okay. uh, and if you're watching the replay of this, go ahead and you can still put your um, answers to the question and we want to hear what you got. You should do that. Yes. Um, I want to I want to pose a question. Sure. Uh, I want to pose a question to everybody out there. And it's just a question for fun. It's not a new segment or nothing like that. Um, just name a name of a movie, TV show, a scene, you know, something that you saw or read um, that made you cry. Like a movie, like, you know, a Christian was like Toy Story, whatever one it is, makes her cry every time. And it almost made me cry while seeing her cry. Oh, well, that, I know this hey, one top my head like that. Oh, he knew. I know what you're gonna say. Okay, go ahead. The scene with Cochise under the elevated train in Cooley High. Yo, that's sad. It don't make me cry, but it it, it make I drop one. It, 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 it yeah, it, it'll get you there. That's that's probably right there. So, yeah. That movie is, is is traumatizing. It is. It is. I've only seen it once, and I don't really care to see it again. And it's still one of my favorites. Yeah. When Ricky, um, when Ricky got killed? Yes. Oh, when uh, Ricky that, got that killed. That one hit me as hard as Coach It didn't hit me as hard, but yeah, that was still rough. That joke hit me hard because I, I was a young boy and I was like, yo, he about to go play football. USC. Right, right, right. I just didn't see it coming. But. Yeah. yeah. It was a turn for me. But I don't think it made me cry. It just it just invoked a lot of emotion. Mm-hmm. So, But I would say, like, as far as something that made me cry, um, I would say Serafina, the movie Serafina. And the movie A Time to Kill. Mm-hmm. So for me, I have two also: Beaches and Steel Magnolias. Make you cry. Mm-hmm. Beaches? What was that about? There was a um, best friends, and one of them dies. Mm, okay. There was a um. Oh, you know what? I never saw this part of the movie. I don't think I saw this part of the movie. But I know a lot of people when this movie came out that I knew that went to see it said that made him cry. Um, what's the movie with Macaulay Culkin? He got killed. He stung by them bees. My girl. My girl. Mm-hmm. People oh. said that was like real sad. Like they was at the at the. Um, oh, it was movie. terribly like, sad. He, yeah. on. he can't see without his glasses. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that was sad. That was sad. You know what other movie I can think of now? Powder. Oh, powder was sad. Yeah. Yeah, powder was sad. It was a good pretty movie. much go on all night. Right, I was very sad. Powder the John with a Boston George. 
I guess that ain't it. All right, never mind. All right. <laughs> My bad. Somebody oh, said blow. I'm thinking of blow. I'm sorry. Okay. I was thinking the movie Blow with Boston George. Sorry. Um, but yeah, just you know, let us know if, if there's something out there. Somebody said uh, Bridges of Madison County. John Q. Um, yeah. my, Leslie said John Q. When the kid finally got a surgery, yeah, that was kind of you know, that made my my eyelids sweat a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, best man when his wife died and they were at the cemetery. Oh yeah, that was a tough one. Oh yeah, that was a toughie. She just said best man holiday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the movie Forty Two. The Jackie Robinson movie. I, I had a little lump in my throat mm -hmm. at the end of that, John. I, you know, I still can't really on. watch too many things with uh, him in it. Just the whole. Well, this is uh, this is yeah. before he died. Yeah, I know, but I just I I just can't watch it. It's still a little raw for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 well, if there's anything out there with y'all, y'all let us know. We just you know having a little bit of fun. Um, but coming up right now is another portion of the show. It is the Dear 10-7 portion of the show. And this is the portion of the show where y'all write us in and ask us for our advice or some tips or whatever the case may be. And uh, we give you our extremely um, semi-unprofessional opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Completely unprofessional. So here we go. Dear 10-7, I'm in a three-year relationship, but my significant other, Raj, is extremely cautious about... Uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> you just can't help yourself. What's happening? <laughs> so yes, Roz is extremely um, cautious about emotional attachment. Come I'm on. sorry, my bad. My bad. <laughs> this is my such show. a good movie. Wow. It's the Eagles one. That's what that is. <laughs> That's my show. Okay, my show. here we go. It took him two years to tell me he loves me, or even to express any form of serious affection. In addition, he's consumed by his job and worries about how his co-workers perceive him. He seems to prioritize work relationships over personal relationships. Because I have been depressed by the meager affections he shows me, I began an intimate relationship with a former co-worker. Ooh, David. Dave expresses no reservations or restraint in his feelings for me. He makes me feel appreciated, beautiful, and loved. I have strong feelings for them both and realize I have created a horrible situation. I don't want to abandon a stable, caring relationship that was cultivated over three years, and I'm terrified that ending the relationship in favor of one with Dave would be something I regret later. But I'm unwilling to break things off with Dave because he gives me the affection and affirmation that I need. I'd appreciate any advice. Mm. Well, what, what, I'm trying to have your cake and eat it too because you're yeah, not, yeah. It, it sounds like one of them situations. It's, it sounds like a situation where you're not trying to leave what you, what's making you unhappy. Um, I don't know a lot about Dave from this letter. I don't know. You know, it seems like Raj is a hardworking dude. Um, you know, cares about his job. I guess. I don't know if Dave is the same. You know what I'm saying? Like. Where I'm, where I'm going is right right here, you just got to kind of see what makes you happy. Right. Like you can't spare Raj's feelings right now for your own. You know, you got to make you her happy. Raj's financial stability. Yeah. Um, affection, 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 affection. Yep. That's and what makes her happy. What can, what can you do without right now? Yeah. I feel like she's trying to build herself the perfect man, and uh, you're going to mess around and you know be alone yeah be by yourself because i um, wonder if I, I didn't see it anywhere in here did she tell dave about raj or she's seeing mm -mm. okay no she's just using i really it seemed like she using dave to just fill a place that raj is not filling i don't think she really like feels for dave i just think dave just giving her the, the attention and affection and i guess you know the good loving that she's not getting from uh, Raj, but she, I feel like she loves Raj, right? right. She's just getting what she's not getting from him somewhere else, which is selfish. That's it right. is. And wrong. So you're going to yeah. have to break it off with one of them before they both find out and then you're going to find yourself. And then you end up by yourself. Absolutely. Like she doesn't, she doesn't mention any downfall, any of uh, Dave's <clears throat> downfall. I'm sure there's some. Everybody has one or two. Yeah, I'm, she's yeah, I'm sure there's some. That. Yeah, she, yeah, she's not mentioning. It's not because you're not giving us something to work on. It's almost like Dave is this great guy, 
And then Raj is a well, great guy. Davis homeless. You know what I mean? Right. That's exactly. What that's saying. what I'm saying. Like she's that's not telling saying. us. She's not telling us where the balance is. Yeah. yeah. Because from this letter, it sounds like you should just be with Dave. Right. Right. But it, it just you're not telling us right, to it all really right. talking about Dave. Right. But she not she is she really spending enough time to really get to know Dave if she's still in this relationship with Raj mm -hmm. or y'all just spending that you know. The cuddle time together. You might just be in the cuddle phase with I'll put, it, I'll put it to you just like this. If you want to be with somebody else, be with somebody else. Don't don't just be with two people just because. Right. Absolutely. You, you, know, you, you decided to start this relationship with Dave at the expense of Roger's Roger's heart and feelings. When, once he finds out, he's gonna be hurt. You're gonna hurt this man. You might crush him. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You got you got hey, you to told yeah. That's yeah. Exactly. She didn't say that she made it a point to express, right. you know, how she felt. She like, bro, can I get a hug or something sometime? Like, dang. Mm. Yeah. So, you guys, let us know what you think also in the comments about mm -hmm. this letter, and we'll go on to the next one. You gonna read the next one? Yeah, I got it. Let's see. Dear Ten Seven, my ex-wife and I have been divorced for ten years. She was married to someone else during our time apart. They have now separated and my ex and I have reconnected. Currently, we are, we are considering remarrying each other again. Our children are thrilled because they didn't like her second husband at all. <laughs> think this is a good idea? I'll tell you like this. If, if what caused you to divorce in the first place has not been remedy involved or right. put behind you know what I mean then no it's not a good idea absolutely yeah. absolutely <laughs> you see it's like a honeymoon thing for y'all now because there's really no commitment you know what I'm saying but once you say I do like see that is why I left your ass last <laughs> exactly exactly right. exactly yeah exactly so I think maybe y'all should consider going to couples therapy first yeah, but also is this situation has worked for others in the past. Yeah, people get back mm -hmm. together all the time after being divorced. So, so I mean, both of you guys have to decide if that's really what you two want, mm -hmm. you know, and then how committed are you guys to not only each other, but to the relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and how long hard to, to make it work. Mm -hmm. So true. Absolutely. That was really sound advice. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's my turn. Um, do you want me to do the next one? I mean, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Dear 10-7, I've never been ignorant to the fact that, in my opinion, my parents' marriage sucks. My dad is and always has been controlling and domineering. And my mom just exists and really believes it's her job to be submissive. These are people married since the 1970s. Mm. The last couple of years, particularly 2020 through present, my dad has really sucked. I'm mm. not sure if he's going through something or if he's just the worst man ever. He leaves all day and does as he wills. He's come home with new cars, yes, more than one, and she says, wait, and she has no say. I've seen her call and he doesn't answer his phone. My mom claims he hides money and spoon feeds her finances like she's a kid. This is nothing new, but it's gotten worse. It's been secret, but not so secret talk around the family of him supposedly cheating over the years and even more damaging. He just seems like he doesn't like her. Mm. I see it in his demeanor and behavior. He's cold. And it's sad to see my dad be that way. I don't live with them and I try to stay in my own lane. But when I do visit I'm a, and I'm around them, it's a disconnect that's horrible. It's so uncomfortable and it makes me not want to visit or be around them. I have informed my mom it's okay to divorce and it's not okay to allow anyone to treat you like you're nothing. She doesn't deserve it. I and others in the family are more than willing to help her leave and divorce my dad but he's all she knows. She lives and breathes him and she's given up on life. It's just sad that after 40 plus years, he's still doing this. 
but I have my own life and I cannot carry 70 year old adults who refuse to acknowledge dysfunction. I have decided to no longer engage or be involved. I don't talk to my dad often and I've confronted him because I'm concerned he'll take this out. Of, uh, I'm sorry. I haven't confronted him because I'm concerned he'll take it out on my mom. And my mom has burned me in the past and told me to stay out of how they choose to live. But yet she continues to run to me and others complaining. I've informed her that when she's ready to divorce, I'm willing to help. But I have my own life. I have to live. Am I wrong to move forward, build boundaries, and not engage anymore? Absolutely, Absolutely not. Absolutely not. not. <laughs> no. 99 years. If they like it, it's not going to change. If she wanted no. to get out, she'd have left him a long that's how she wanted. time ago. If she liked mm -hmm. it, I love it. There's nothing you, you can you, do. You said your piece. You can't make her leave. You can't nope. make your dad change. Nope. So you just move on. And then what you do is any time you spend with your mom will be outside of the house. Yeah. Or if your right. dad is not there. Right. Bottom line. And then you also cannot come, your mom cannot come to you with all of her complaints and exactly her, and and everything that your dad is doing to her if she's not going to make a change. Like, you obviously like it because you've been putting up mm -hmm. with it for 45 years. So, stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I feel the same way. Like, she should not be coming to you with those issues if she's not, you know what I mean? If she's not ready to do anything about it. And I would let her know, you know, how, how I feel because it probably hurts her, you know, to see her mom being treated that way. And you may have, you know, look, that hurts me, but you know, this is what you're choosing to deal with. And so, you know, if this is what you're going to choose to deal with, then don't come. I don't want to hear, you know, don't just, just tell her, like, I don't want to hear, or if she call you with it, mm -hmm. oh, you know what, mom, I got to go up. Uh, something happened. Uh, uh, phone disconnected. Yep. You gotta cut that stuff off because it's gonna start to affect you mentally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if your parents are in their seventies, and I'm assuming you're probably like our age, like forty. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you you got your own thing going on. Like I can't listen. I don't have time. Yeah, for that. Can't do it. You like it. You've exactly. been liking it. You stuck with him all this long. What are you calling me for? Exactly. But the other thing about it is. Your mom must like it because not only is she not leaving, she not doing her own thing. No. If you think he hiding money and all that stuff, then look, you go get yourself a job and then you got your own money and you don't have to worry about him piecemealing you any money. Mm -hmm. I got my own though. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I agree with everything y'all said. I mean, mm -hmm. are you wrong? Absolutely not. I mean, you, you. You did what you said. When, when she's ready to leave him, you'll be there to help. Blah yep. blah blah. And it's that simple. It's nothing else you can do. I was you just sit there and, you, and wait. You've done what you. Yep. Then you also got to protect your own mental health. <laughs> you got to protect your own mental health. You can't just be you know in that situation and, and letting it stress you out. You got your own life to live. So. Exactly. But I'm curious as to the type of relationship that they have with the dad. Well, she said she doesn't even talk to him like that. But like since since he's been acting like this or all, always like we don't I'm not. Um, she said she, she, she says I don't talk to my dad often and I haven't confronted him because yeah. she's concerned that if she confronts him he'll take it out on the mom. Right, right. Yeah, he um, gotta know something if y'all if you don't talk to him that often and when you talk to him. Honestly, the dad is probably like cool. One less thing I gotta deal with. Exactly. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Like he probably like. I'm 70. I, I'm at the jumping off point. I don't have to please nobody exactly. but me. And mm -hmm. we all know how these older people can be. Because he's like, listen, what you going to say to me? Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly. <laughs> hey, well, I didn't talk to mom about to make me some food and crack my toes. <laughs> 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 you are so stupid. <laughs> All right, here we go. Last, last Dear 10-7 letter of the evening. Dear 10-7. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. We got a, we got a comment. Uh, Stephanie Williams said, Karma will get them. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. Karma, karma comes. All right, here we go. Dear 10-7, I'm a 47-year-old man. My 46-year-old fiance and I have built a comfortable life together. <clears throat> Excuse me. We live in a nice home and have significant savings. But after a 15-year loving relationship, she has decided she wants to be with somebody, someone else. She had recently lost a great deal of weight, 
which boosted her self-esteem, and she started to do things I felt were inappropriate, like staying out all night, oh, excuse me, staying out all night at least once a week. <clears throat> I've never said anything adverse about her behavior because I trusted her when she said she's with girlfriends. Well, now she's staying in a weekly rental motel room with this guy. It leads me to believe they both left relationships and had nowhere else to go. She didn't give me she didn't give me a chance to fight for us counseling or anything like that, or even a heads up that she was unhappy. One afternoon when I got home from work, I got a text from her saying she was sorry for not being able to tell me in person, but she was doing, but she was doing this for herself. I have always been an honorable man in any relationship I have, I have had. This is hard for me to understand and move on from. I've never been this hurt and emotionally drained. She will not communicate with me verbally only through emails and text. I feel desperate and lost. Please give me encouragement that there is light somewhere at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, there's light at the end of the tunnel when you decide to let her go. Uh-huh. Come on, you'll, you'll exactly. get over her. You'll meet exactly. somebody Take else. Take that significant savings and go buy you a Corvette or something. Mm-hmm. Be glad y'all didn't Dang. go all the way and get married, mm-hmm. you know, because then it would be real ugly. So Just she me. left, and now she living at the Motel 6 with the bull? Mm. Good luck with that. Yeah. Change the locks, bro. You better, you better get your piece of the savings because that Motel 6 is going to get all of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Oh, next definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, maybe they have something in, in line that, that neither one of them could take money out without the other one's signature. I hope so. Mm-hmm. I hope so, too. I hope not. Go get it, homie. <laughs> yeah, that, too. Oh. On the other side, that, too. Uh. Oh, who we waving at? Oh, Eli. Eli, he just came back. Hey, lemon squeezy. This child been ripping and running. So that is your Dear 10-7 portion of the show. Um, and if you want to sponsor that part of the show, of course, you can do so. Just <sighs> holla at New Twist Radio, NewTwistRadio, gmail.com. And let us know. Or you can just holla at me. Um, excuse me. While I have you here, just want to remind you all to make sure you all subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's, new, that's YouTube.com slash radio. You can check out all our shows. All our 10-7 shows are there. All our Check Swing podcasts are there. All of our uh, Let's Not Argues, all of the Murder Mayhem and Minutes, all of the um, I'm missing one. Intelligent Ignorances, all of it is there. Y'all can check it out um, you know, and be entertained and make sure you share the page with, with your friends and your enemies and have them subscribe as well because we are bringing you much more here in 2023 and in the future. Guarantee you that. Guarantee. Guarantee. So we have an interesting topic today. It's one that I, I kind of like. Not that I don't like any of the other ones. I just, this one is, <laughs> this one is. It drew your attention? Yeah, Aww. this one is like, you know, this is a, a good one to have. Okay, well, let's get into it. All right, so this one is Little Things Women Do That Guys Secretly Love. Get ready. I didn't now, know wait, let me put a caveat in. Okay. If you're a guy watching the show, and there's something else on that that you know that we haven't mentioned on this list. Put it in the comments so we can talk about it. Yep, oh. guys only. And if you're a guy watching this show, send the link out right now to all your chicks, all your jobs. <laughs> all, of them. all of them. Send it out to all of them right now. Yep. I'm telling you, send them out right now. All We're right, gonna give you a couple it. seconds. Yep. Copy the copy the link. Send them all to all your jobs right now. Yep. So I'm going to run through them and then we'll discuss. Okay. Okay. Let's get okay, it. Okay. So, so this basically is saying whether a guy is just starting to date a woman or is in a committed relationship with her, there are some cute things girls do that guys love. And she usually does these things without thinking twice about it. There are a lot of weird things guys find attractive, including little habits and actions you're probably not even aware of. So these are a couple of them. Like I said, I'm going to run through them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Laying your head on his chest. What are you looking at me for? Who's looking? <laughs> Wait, what you saying? He's like, what are you looking at me for? <laughs> Asking for support. I don't think they mean child support. Um, <laughs> making the first move. Texting okay. him first. Telling him you appreciate him. I've heard guys say that before. Like they really like that shit. 
Um, telling him how you really feel. Biting his lip while kissing. Wearing his clothes. Yeah, yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> I, know, I know he hates him while wearing his clothes. Yeah. <laughs> really listening. Making eye contact. Texting him when you're out with your friends. Uh, okay. Being affectionate. Surprising him with treats. Like he's a dog. I know, that's what I thought about. Like, really? Giving him words of affirmation. Planning a date night. Remembering what he likes and dislikes. I 25 years later, I still can't remember. Um, remembering him, wait, reminding him how much you love him. All right. So let's go back to the top. Laying your head on his chest. Lay your head on my. Mm -mm. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> and just relax. So like, yes. do y'all love that or is it annoying? Husband. It, it's not annoying to me. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, but there's, but always remember there comes a point in that situation where something is probably going to go numb or uncomfortable. <laughs> and we had to adjust. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. mean we're throwing you off. We just need our hip to wake back up or our arm <laughs> to wake back up or something like that. Just right. Please understand that. So this right. is saying it's one of the best feelings when a woman lays her head on your chest and puts her arm over you. So, like, for the first five minutes, it's cute, but then you're like, okay, my arm's falling asleep. Get right. up. I can't feel my shoulder. <laughs> Get your big yeah. head up. Right. I don't know the time frame. It probably varies per guy, but, you know, there yeah. is a time. Mm -hmm. You got to be like, all right, I got to. You know, you got to be smart about it, though. You have to exercise <laughs> your hand. Mm -hmm. and, and, by, is, and by that, what are you talking about? Exercising how? You know, because, you know, you women, y'all, some of y'all have, uh, you know, like stress relief balls back there. <laughs> you know what he's saying. Right? <laughs> I was going to say that conversation is probably better for 10 7 after dark. <laughs> right, right. You know what? We, uh, good idea. We need to do mm -hmm. that. So, asking for support as men, this is coming from a male perspective, and I'm asking you to, to chime in. It says, as men, you enjoy feelings as though you are being protective. And this signifies that she feels safe in your arms. It's one of the most attractive things girls can do. I, I, I don't get that. Yeah, uh, no, I, so, I mean, because, so it's like. A woman asking for support? Yeah, yeah. So I think support may be the, the wrong word here. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like help. You, you understand? Advice. Oh, okay. You, know, like, you dig what I'm saying? That that type thing. So it's not So like I my car broke down kind of thing? Is it? So that's the expected I mean, stuff that we call that to oh I had a bad day at work this happened right. or what do you think I should do type thing you right, know what I'm right. Like, it, 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 it can run the gambit of themes mm -hmm. but I think you know I think I think in this you also I'm have a be. fixer yes you are so so okay. if you if you tell me I'm not that dude you know like. Oh well, how, dear. How would you like me to support you? With, that's not me. If you tell me a problem, I'm automatically thinking, "Oh, we could fix this." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You dig know what I'm saying? I'm not that. Oh dear. How would you like for me to support you in, in such a way that you know doesn't take the power away? That's not me. Mm -hmm. If you come to me with a problem, I'm thinking you already done thought about everything, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. nothing worked, or you didn't think anything would work. So you know, you come to me. Either to bounce your ideas off or to come for some fresh ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah, but you gotta be careful what you ask, ladies. And I'm gonna use I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Well, you go ahead, suck your teeth, because I'm gonna use our marriage as an example. <laughs> I do it. Tyra is <laughs> the medical person in our house. No, like if there's a, a <laughs> sickness, a medication, a condition. Tyra's the person to talk to. <laughs> but then sometimes Tyra will have some, hey, do you think I should take this medicine with this and then do this? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Like, that is your lane. I stay out of it. If it ain't saying Tylenol, <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I do not know. So yeah, does do that. be careful with what you're asking us because <laughs> I, 
you ask me something that I have no, no, I, I don't know. And then, and then I, and then I'll feel bad. I'm gonna need you to lay your head on my chest. <laughs> After you take that medicine with that other stuff, you done passed out. Lay on the chest. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> All right. So the next one is making the first move. So, and this is true. There's a lot of pressure on guys to always initiate. Sometimes he may not know if he's being too pushy or texting too much. He might overthink it and not text you at all, which could leave you wondering. So, ladies, making the first move will help you both out. Absolutely. Because, you know, sometimes we don't care. Not that we don't care. We don't know. Right. right. If y'all if y'all are interested, listen. Again, me. If you're interested, you got to tell me. Ain't you can't right. just be dropping little hints and all that old silly stuff. Because I'd be, they'd be like, yo, dog. I'd be like, what? what? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what? Because that's how I am. This is like state the obvious, please. I'm, 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 I'm straight up. I tell you how I feel, and that's what, and that's, and that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't do well with hints. No, I'm not. not the, I'm not the hint picker rapper. Like, no, you got, yeah, you got to tell me straight. I'm not the hint picker rapper at all. Never have been. Yo, and the thing about it is, is. Part, I, I believe part of not picking up on hints is a self-defense mechanism because you don't want to. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Put yourself out there mm -hmm. and you miss, you got it twisted, mm -hmm. and now you all embarrassed, your feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. You think mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sure. I got it. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, okay. I can see that. Yeah. I can definitely see that. Um, this next one kind of piggybacks off of the last one. Texting him first. Guys love to feel affection too. And if he's really into you, he will be thinking about you. Sending him a quick text will brighten his day and spark a good conversation. Uh, that's yeah. what we did, right? Yeah. Like before, yeah, go ahead. we were always like just text any and emojis only. Remember for a long time. Mm -hmm. Y'all funny. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, so we were, you know, we kind of knew what, you know, what was being said. So I told this is one of my girlfriends, like before we even started dating. I was like, oh yeah, this I never is my emoji the, friend. This I, never, my emoji I, never, guy. I never sent the eggplant. Oh, well, that's very respectful of you. Never sent He probably eggplant. wanted to. He probably was like, well, let me delete that. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> but see, held it. But then they again, a little while. that's that self-defense mechanism right there. Uh -huh, right exactly. Because right, because you might be like, oh, no. like, I, I, like I want to sit, but yo, but I don't want her listen. to think mm. exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And this one, like I said, I've heard this before, and I heard this from a, a, a friend, just a, a male friend, <laughs> telling him you appreciate him. Some people are more affectionate than others, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just remember, if a man puts a lot of effort into your relationship, as he should. He will never complain about hearing how much you appreciate him. That is so true. I think that's well, probably. Who's going to complain about that? Please tell me how. Stop. Please, please stop telling me how great I am. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak any more of that. But some women, I think, you know, the point of this is some women don't say it at all. They mm -hmm. just think it's like understood. But it is nice to hear. It is. Mm -hmm. Some women don't do any of these. Really? There are women that feel like they should be catered to and they don't have to do any of this stuff. Well, then, really, are they, they single? So that's like a one-way <laughs> relationship. Is they man about to leave? I mean, they probably... I mean, to me, a lot of this is just common courtesy that right. you would, like, Absolutely. give your friends. You know what I mean? So if you would do it for your friends, why not do it for your man? Like, that's that's weird that people... That, there's women out here that don't do that. Like, that's weird to me. Yeah. I just think it's a different um, dynamic with like dating and new relationships anymore. Like, yeah, maybe. Weird. I'm so glad I'm an old married lady. <laughs> um, telling him how you really feel. While he should be able to read your feelings from your actions, some guys need a more direct approach. It will make him feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I doubt that. Will it make you feel warm and fuzzy? Does it make you feel warm and fuzzy when I tell you I love you? Absolutely. What about you? No, I'd be like, babe, I love you. He'd be like, you better. Hold on, what did Goose say? <laughs> Absolutely. But he's lying. <laughs> no, he's not. Me totally is. 
I'm like, babe, what, I what was the question? Oh, you, uh, what's your parents I was, but I forgot. Where's the oh, I was too. Does it does it make me feel what, warm and fuzzy inside? Warm and fuzzy, yeah. Do you feel warm and fuzzy? But the thing about it is, if you're not a warm and fuzzy dude, then why? That's not a feeling. You dig what I'm saying? Right. Okay, but if you're not a warm and fuzzy dude, I get it. But you should have some kind of sensation. Yeah. Or like you should feel something. Unless you're I don't a know how much you're right supposed to be feeling, but yeah, it feels good to hear. Yeah, of course it does. But she better. See? See? <laughs> well, yeah. She should. See? Yeah, see? Tara agrees. Uh, I hate my mm -hmm. Um, I don't know about this next one. Biting his lip. Oh, I've done this to you, though. Biting yeah, his I've done lip it. while kissing. I didn't realize how great this one was until my girlfriend randomly did it one day. Lip biting is another attractive thing girls do during a passionate kiss. Not every guy is on the same page about this, so make sure you communicate about his kissing style beforehand. <laughs> You're like, don't you bite me for me? You an animal? I mean, as long as you ain't drawing blood. <laughs> right, don't draw blood. Don't do that. Right. <laughs> I can, I, yeah, it's cool. I can go with her. I like, and I, mean, I wouldn't be like, damn, why she ain't back? Because I'm going to bite her. <laughs> okay, well. He bites me as much as he possibly can. I'd be like, can you stop biting me, please? I guess that must be sweet. Mm -hmm. Nope, ain't gonna stop. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Wearing his clothes. Guilty. 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 I like it. It, it will show him that you to appreciate it. Until I mess up his golf shirt. Yeah, she messed up my favorite golf oh. shirt. Oh. No, I, I did not. It just. It, well, hold on. It she did, on she didn't mess it up, but she was the last one wearing it. Exactly. Prior to it not being, but I was up. under the weather, and the, and the material of the golf shirt was very comfortable on my skin. Oh, it was already broke. But then by the time I gave it back, it was like broke, broke. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I slept on. Hold on, hold like, on, y'all. We talking about a shirt? A so golf many, shirt. How many though? of y'all have described a shirt as broke? You said it was only a little bit broke. All right, it's a it's a it's a shirt. Well, it was a golf shirt, so you know they now, have now golf shirts are not mechanically different from any other shirt. Yeah, they got the buttons and the collar. Yeah, but this button shirt. had like the buttons had this little flap underneath, and it separated from the shirt. How yeah, it, 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 but it wasn't. I don't know what I don't know, but the shirts right. are very comfortable. I like every them. time so I wore the shirt. The shirt. <laughs> anyway, every time I wore the shirt, oh, oh. oh. no, it was. I'm telling you, it was like that when I took it off the hanger. And you still put it on? Yes. Yeah. No, you should have so been like, babe, story. you know, you know, your shirt messed up mm -hmm. before you even put it on. Oh, babe, since your shirt messed up, I'm gonna wear it. Uh -huh. No. I probably should have. I should have. I did break the shirt. This is it. Mm -hmm. My so, favorite golf shirt at that. You know, I still have it. You know, I mean, I'm not getting rid of it. Right? We can fix it. We're we gonna, fix we gonna it. fix the shirt. Okay. Um, read. Read another I'm, one. I'm wearing it when the uh, I'm wearing it when the weather get warm and I go play golf. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say to Goose, does it bother you that I wear your clothes? If I say yes, is, is it going to change anything? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, does it bother you? That you I wear are, are there certain are there certain clothes that she will put on that that wouldn't bother you? Well, the thing, this is the thing. Like she, so first of all, we have two different styles of dress. She and I. So. Oh well, yeah. No, I mean I'm not just talking about it girls clothes and boys clothes oh. so so like like most of my clothes like like the clothes i wear to work and stuff button down shirts and things of that nature so it doesn't bother me if she wears sweatshirts i mean because i don't have many of those you know or t-shirts or but she will say i need something to sleep in and i'm like go on my jaw get a shirt yeah like i've gone to sleep in like his underwear his t-shirts and his socks <laughs> You yeah. Can't put my drawers on. No, I haven't. But your basketball shorts. Oh yeah. Your shirts, your your hoodies. Yeah. One hoodie I never even gave back to you. The C and eight one. Oh. It's, it's so big and comfy. Like I just love it. <laughs> All right. Let me skip ahead so we can. We're running out of okay. time. 
Um, really listening. Use your ears. Women know better than anyone that listening isn't just a passive activity. It's an action and it takes effort. Sometimes a guy has something important going on in his life, is working towards a goal, or is just stressed out about work. There are two times I cannot talk to Tyra about something because she will not hear what I say. When is that? When she has her phone face like this and when she's binge watching something on TV. Oh yeah, that's true. Like if I'm if I'm binge watching on no, it's not the right time. But like what I'll see a whole dissertation is, and she won't hear any of it. What I feel like understand is this is the 23rd century. It's the 23rd? You, oh you, it is. You can pause I know <laughs> live TV now. I so know there is no reason it's not the 23rd century. 27th. Yeah, it's 22nd. So there is no reason for anyone to be ignored. Because you can pause, rewind, and I all of that. Sometimes. I will. I will sometimes pause when she talks to me. So but you, do you, do you realize that she's watching something, or yeah, exactly. Something, and then you just be like, you know what? Never mind. I'll talk to you later. Do you do that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you remember and come back to it, or is it just it's gone? Hopefully. <laughs> no, and he do the same thing. He playing his game. I could come back here and say something. And all you hear is clickety clickety nah, click. I can't and you can it. pause your game. Not all the time. Nah, pausing the game is a little different. Oh my yeah, god. If you can pause the time. If, if I'm playing against somebody so, so this the thing. When, when, when you're playing a game, it's interactive. So you may be in a groove doing something. So you can pause a game at a certain point, and then when you go to unpause it, you get shot. <laughs> because, because uh, your reaction sad. time is going to be different because you're coming out of it being paused. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, I don't know because I don't play no games, but okay. Okay. All right. Um, the next one, making eye contact. When you sit down, keep his eye contact and become genuinely engaged in a conversation about something important to him. It will let him know you care, even if he already does. I mean, that's like normal communication. Yeah. Like you learn that in kindergarten to make eye contact. Oh, you're yeah. supposed to. But sometimes people won't make eye contact. Mm-hmm. That's weird. I think sometimes so. somebody be talking, you're talking to them and then you don't even look at they don't even look at the person. They don't turn their head to look at the person or nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Okay. Um, texting him when you're out with your friends. I've heard some really bad stories about guys who are insanely jealous and don't let their girlfriends go out with their friends, especially with other guys. While I understand the apprehension, a man should be secure enough in his relationship and trust his girlfriend enough to not worry every second she's out without him. If you have a man who is mature enough to tell you to go out and have a good time, text him every now and then during the course of the night just to say hello. It will make him smile and let him know you're still thinking about him when you're out. I'm like, you're coming back. Like, what the world? Yeah, I mean, all of that is true. But on the flip side, she could be out there getting law dog and still texting. Say, hey, babe, thinking about you. <laughs> I was... oh. That's true. <laughs> okay. That's true. Because Hold on. she don't want to mess up. Me... Because Face she don't want to mess up what up. she got. Hold on. Let me text him real quick. Because like, Yeah, that's right. She don't want to mess up between for... Dave and Raj. <laughs> Not willing to break That's off the relationship with Raj. Mm-hmm. Yep. Same thing. You right. No, I, I didn't. I haven't. Uh, I haven't received a drunk text in like ten years. Which is a good thing. I was about to say, do you want one of those? No, I'm just thinking, like, yeah, you know, I, I just like, and because you said like text text when you're out with your friends and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and I just started thinking about it, like. That usually happens like in a drunk state of mind a lot of times. Mm-hmm. If it's like one of them type of night where you're going out. Yeah, because other than that, it's like I'll see you when I get the hell home. <clears throat> right. I mean, it's nice to know that you're still alive. And, I'm, yeah. I w- and I'm, I'm going to assume that, that these te- you're sending these text messages and without being face down ass up. Right, got you. Oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. Oh. I mean, you know, no, I'm because sorry. You know, let, let us know that. You, let us know you got there. Right, right, and that's why I don't go out because I'm scared to be sex trafficked. <laughs> oh, <gosh>. It's true. 
That's a real feeling, though. It is. It's, it's the, the, that's a valid fear. It is. Yeah. If I if I go out, it's, I, especially if it's dark, I have to be with Goose or Eli or, I'm, or somebody. I want to be sex attracted. Like, that's my head. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, surprising him with treats. This one I thought was funny because I was like, "What? Like he's a puppy?" Right. Um, I thought the same thing. <laughs> the little things go a long way, especially a free donut. What? A free donut? Like, might as well be like, what am I, kindergarten? You remember this donut? Right. <laughs> I, I, like, I like when Tyra brings me a treat. I did. I brought you a treat yesterday. I mean, I think I kind of try to do stuff, right. like, but a donut? Like, I don't know. I'll you know, go to so, the store and I'll be like, babe, I got the seltzer waters you like. No, no, but so I understand it, but I think it's, at least for us, it's bigger than like a, a donut because we're like foodies. You know what I'm saying? So if it's a donut, it's a special donut. Oh it's, yeah, it's, it's, not, just gonna it's not just a glazed donut. Yeah, you do. Uh, it's like up on the Wawa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's time Tyra bought me special donuts. I'm just nasty though. Mm, where'd you get them? Who cares? They were nasty. I think they were. <laughs> Yeah, let's not say where they came from, but they, oh, they, they okay. had, tell me all, tell they had me all, all this extra special stuff on. I ate it. I was like, man, it's terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Um, all right. Giving him words of affirmation. This goes both ways. You don't require a lot to stay happy. And we really do love doing things for our girlfriends to make her feel special. Okay, that's good. That being said, relationships are a two-way street. Validation through words of affirmation help men feel special and more secure. Is that true? That's true, y'all? I mean, I'm asking the two men here. I don't yeah. words of affirmation, so I kind of tuned out on that one. Okay. I mean, Because Justin's like, I know I'm doing a good job. Yeah. I mean, so so it's like know. saying thank you. I mean, it's, it's things that, like, you know, it has to be anything special. Uh-huh. You do know what I'm saying? It just be like, you know what? I appreciate you cooking dinner last night. That type of thing. It don't have to be oh. nothing special. You know what I mean? I don't have to, I don't know marching band and flags and all no that. pop and circumstance for yeah, you. No. Okay, gotcha. It's, it's uh, kind of like just letting them know that you see him and you see, you know, like what he's doing and the effort that he's putting in and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, some people some people it does them well. Yeah. And like you said, Justin, it's a lot of women don't that don't do anything on this list. So um, hopefully they're watching the show and then you'll be yeah. able to keep it yeah. All right. Um, planning a date night. The good news is that it doesn't take grand romantic <laughs> gestures to make a man happy. But every now and then, arranging a date night can take the pressure off the man to plan everything. Plus, it will make him feel good. How Absolutely. Feel good and, and, no, but the biggest bonus about the woman planning the date night, if she truly plans it, is that there will be no discussion about what you want to eat. This is true. It's a hundred percent true. You did what I'm saying? Like, oh, like listen, because my this, my whole thing is I can find something to eat anywhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm listen, because because I'm about the good time. I don't have to go out to eat and leave satisfied. If there's nothing on the menu that I want, I order dessert and a cup of coffee, and I'll be fine, and I'll eat something later. It's true. But it's always, I don't want to taste for that. I don't want to taste for that. Oh, I, don't <laughs> for that. I feel you, Tara. I I feel that, you. that was me. That's most of y'all. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I'm the same way. Like, I want to eat, but I don't want that. I don't, I don't know what I want. See? Right. I don't know what I want. Like, I never know what I want. What is that about? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. Like, how can you be so hungry? And not want to eat nothing. <laughs> you don't want to eat nothing, but it's like you really want that Wait, hunger to you be satisfied. I want to be satisfied. Listen, have, you know, don't make the decision eat. like it's your last meal. It might be. You never know. Don't ever know. No, you make the decision like you know it's your last meal. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it's true. I don't know. I don't know, and then and then Goose gets frustrated because I be like, I you know, eat a turkey so no, I can't, I can't I tell you how many times we've just been out. Because sometimes we'll just go out for a drive, and we'll be out for hours just driving around. And but like, you hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. What you want to eat? Oh, I don't know. And I'm driving, so I be like, babe, find something on your phone. You know what I mean? On the way home, so we can stop and get something to eat. And she do everything else but on that phone, so I go straight home. <laughs> 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 oh my God, I'm so 
<laughs> and then Justin be saying, we it's it's food in the refrigerator. We can eat when we get in the house. Yeah. Warm something up. There's always leftovers. All right. Um, remembering what he likes and dislikes. A girl who pays attention is a girl that's bound to make you feel special. Maybe you cook him his favorite meal or make him a Spotify playlist if you're 20 um, of his favorite songs. <laughs> Um, okay, so the last one. Remembering him, wait, reminding him how much you love him. Falling in love isn't easy. It takes a lot of work. And there are tons of cute and adorable ways to do things that guys love. Right. And everything that we just discussed are one of those things. All right. What, like um, a date? Planning a date night is a way to show that you love him. I think that's an excellent Words idea. Words of affirmation is a way to show that you love him. Mm -hmm. Every one of those things on this list is a way that you can show your maid that you yeah. love him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you I know agree. you know what God made up this list because all them Jones. Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, we just want to make sure y'all got it down. Mm -hmm. so we broke it down to the nitty gritty because we know you can do this, 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 and this. Unlike you guys, who know you're hungry sometimes but have no idea what you're gonna eat. <laughs> All right, Justin, we got it. <laughs> and with that being said, we're going to segue into our last portion of the show with our final twist. If you have a final twist, want to get something off your chest, got something you want to say, something inspiring, something funny, go ahead and put it in the chat, and we're going to go ahead with our final twist for the night. Who okay. wants to go first? I'll go first. I have two final twists. Okay. Yeah. Um, my first final twist is, is a, a quote from President Theodore Roosevelt. Do what you can with what you have where you are. Mm. And y'all could y'all could do with that what you want. My other final twist is the Eagles going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Go birds. Go birds. Yep. Absolutely. So I'm just going to bounce off of that because like the Eagles on the way to the Super Bowl, what did they do? They kept their eye on the prize. They had a goal that they wanted to attain. They didn't get, they didn't let their egos get too far ahead of them. You know, so in life, if there's something that you want to do, pursue it, no matter what it is, because always shoot for the moon, because even if you miss, you land amongst the stars. Yay, that was so good, hon. Love yeah. it, love it, love it. That was it. really good, babe. Mm -hmm. Tara, you want to go? Sure, I'll go. Uh, my final twist tonight is a little somber, but I just want to remind everybody tonight to keep the family of, um, oh, Lord, now I'm drawing a blank on his name. Tyree. Yeah. Is it Tyree Nichols? Yeah, Tyree's Nichols. Keep his family in your prayers. Um, you know, just a. I promised myself I wouldn't watch it, but I, you know, I watched portions. You of did? It. I did. Oh, I, can't. I couldn't help myself. I just had to see. Um. So you know, and just just pray for this nation. Um, and keep his family in, in prayer. It was horrific. <laughs> God bless you. Bless you. And justice for Tyrese Nichols. Mm hmm. Um, mine's is short, sweet, and to the point. Oh, off your worries when you throw off your clothes at night. Yes, I like that. Say it again. I didn't catch the whole thing. Throw off your worries when you throw off your clothes at night. I love it. Right. Don't put the same clothes back and on. And don't tomorrow. put the same clothes back on tomorrow. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Good idea. You know, like, you know, like the way jeans a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Just in general, might be a good idea. All right. Well, we're going to get up out of here. We appreciate y'all checking out this episode of the 107 show. We will be back next week for another episode because in two weeks we will not be on. We will not be on. Right? No, because that's super we will not be on in two weeks. All right. There's going something to important shit. going on. What shit? Oh. So, so in two weeks we won't be here. So make sure you pass this around. Pass this around. Make sure you share us with your friends and your family. Don't pass us around. I don't want to be passed. And uh, <laughs> share this link and all that good stuff. And maybe some of the advice we gave could help some of your friends out. And uh, we just really hope that we can do that for y'all. But for Tara, Tyra, Goose, and myself, I want to thank y'all for being with us. We're going to get up out of here. We talk to y'all next week right here on the 10-7 Show. 
Peace. 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 Bye.